And I was playing in clubs like CB's Gallery, which is next door to CBGB's. I played at CBGB's with my band, but at CB's Gallery, I'd play either with the band or solo acoustic. I played um, a lot of times at a place called the Cottonwood Cafe, which was down on Bleecker Street between um, Hudson and Christopher. My friend J.W. Johnson had run this place. It was a sort of Tex-Mex and Southern cuisine. And, um, you know, you could get free dinner and also $75, and you'd play a couple sets. And your friends could come in. They didn't have to pay to see you. And we'd have our fried catfish and fried jalapenos and play concerts down there. And I'd play a lot of these songs. It was that whole scene in the early 90s. You know, there was Shanae, which was a club downtown. I didn't play there a lot, but, like, Jeff Buckley was playing down there. Um, up at Columbia University, um, Ani DeFranco, Jesse Harris, The Neilds, like a lot of singer-songwriters were playing up at um, Columbia at their folk festivals and the Postscript. There weren't even microphones or anything. It was just, you know, people would listen. It was a really great listening atmosphere. Of course, we played at the bitter end and the bottom line we wanted to play at. And then there was the whole wetland scene going on at the time, which was more when we'd play with bands. And bands that played there were... Um, the Spin Doctors, Hootie and the Blowfish, Play Joan there. Osborne played there a lot. Yeah. Uh, so there's a whole scene, I think, of singer-songwriters and bands around that same time. A lot of us knew each other. It wasn't folk, though, necessarily. And it's funny, too, you know, years later, right when I was about to put my first major label album out called Tales, and Juan and I ran into um, Steve Miller, fellow Texan, and, uh, you know, we said to him that, we were putting this record out, and he said, oh, you know, that folk stuff, that's not going to be popular at all, the girls with the acoustic guitars, you know. And then, of course, I think the next year, <laughs> Stay became a number one hit. And I was playing in clubs.